wow, no sooner that we were supposed to have our main event matchup that the Road Warriors attacked Paul White and the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock, from behind. And the match has not even started yet. Oh, but now it has. And who, who are the two legal men here? Okay, it looks as if uh, Paul White and Hawk are the two legal men in this match to start the match. I mean, let's take a look at Paul White. I mean, Paul White is 500 pounds, if not close to it. And yet, the Road Warriors are two of the strongest men that you could find on this earth. Of course, Ken Shamrock might be the oddball out, but he is the world's most dangerous man for a reason. Oh, but you know, but you really don't want to sell... Paul White, in terms of how dangerous he can be, short. Figuratively and literally. Anyway, match underway and uh, an arm breaker right to Paul White. I mean, Hawk is a very big guy, but <laughs> there are not very many big guys that can dwarf Hawk, but if anybody could do it, it's the Big Show, Paul White. Although right now, Hawk is taking it right to Paul White, but with little to no effect. A backside slam onto Hawk. I mean, as far as this particular matchup is concerned... I mean, ever since the feud started a week ago, uh, Hawk challenged the, the big boss man to a submission match, and Hawk won the match. So, as far as the series is concerned, uh, the series is one to nothing in favor of the Road Warriors. So, yeah, the cor it, needless to say, the corporation needs to win this in order to prove that they are every bit as competitive as the Road Warriors. Uh, folks, uh, let me take a time out, okay? Alright, well, you, you didn't miss much. Uh, I just had to answer uh, a phone call, especially with that newfangled cell phones that they have nowadays. I mean, you know, I, I, it, it's going to take me some getting used to as far as cellular phones are concerned because... You know, for many years, I've been we've been using the uh, the the telephone type of uh, you, you know you know those uh, telephones that have wires, especially for all you youngsters out there. Yeah, we have something like that, and we still do. But my son, or not my son actually, but uh, my nephew, I should say. Excuse me. Uh, he started using cell phones and. <laughs> Uh, or a cell phone, I should say, and he says, and, and he talks about how cool it is, especially since you don't have to go to an actual pay phone or, uh, or, or go out of your way to get to the telephone when you have a telephone in your pocket, which I have to admit, it's pretty cool, but it's kind of hard to get used to, but, but folks, I'll get used to it, you know, but I had to you know, take a call from uh, one of those uh, newfangled cell phones that I have. And I have to use them because otherwise, how am I going to know when I'm going to get a call? You know, I, you know, uh, you know, take this from somebody that, uh, well, uh, let me just address something to the very young viewers, especially those who actually have cell phones in their possession. Let me describe how a, uh, a wired telephone would work. What you would do is you would put it into a telephone. A telephone line you would have, it connects to those, um, those posts with all, with all that electricity. Well, that's where the telephone line is. And what you had to do, especially back in the olden days, and I mean, and you still have, and you still see these uh, today here in 1999, but what I'm trying to get at is that 
what you would have to, what you used to do is, if you wanted to make a call, especially at a restaurant, you had to go to one of those pay phones. I mean, they still have them, but I would have to think that over the next couple of years, especially, you know, 15 years from now, I would have to think that those will be extinct, especially with the cell phone being invented. But yeah, you used to have to... But before you were forced to have to... Alright, let me slow down. Before you would be forced to go to a telephone... Uh, to a, one of those pay... Those telephone pay phones. Like, uh, it, it's a pay phone, I should say. And you had to insert X amount of money in order to use it. So I kind of do like the fact that you don't have to pay to use it, but that you do have to pay for a monthly bill, just like you've always had to, with those uh, wired telephones. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about the telephones, you know, nowadays, especially as we get closer to the year 2000. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the year 2000, if there, e if there's even gonna be a 2000, I don't know. I mean, the jury is still out on whether the world is gonna end in 2000. I don't know. I really do not know. I mean, I'm very scared for my son, yes, but... You know, if it happens, it happens. And all I have to say is... It was one heck of a ride, folks. But meanwhile, uh, Animal is being forced to... Well, never mind. He got back in the ring artificially at the hands of Paul White. Uh, so far, neither team has had the advantage distinct distinctly. And now Ken Shamrock tags in Paul White. I mean, Animal is a really big guy, but... He, he looks like nothing compared to Paul White. That's for sure. I mean, Paul White is the difference maker in this matchup because without him, the corporation would not have any heavy hitters to rely on other than the Big Boss Man. As Animal gets thrown onto the outside. Well... Animal gets back inside. Uh oh, now both men are on the outside. Ooh, wow, nice slam, nice takedown onto a much bigger man, such as Paul White. Thrown back inside is Paul White, and an elbow right to the head of Paul White. But whipped inside is Animal. And Animal, what's he doing? Well, both men are still are on the outside again. I, I don't get what's going on as far as Animal and Big Show, Paul White, is concerned, but... But then again, you can't make... You really can't make no sense out of nonsense, if you get my drift. Oh, and a poke in the eye right to Animal. I mean, then again, Big Show, or Paul White, I should say. Big Show is his nickname. But Paul White, even when he's in trouble, he will do what he has to do in order to stay in a match. And you know... Unlike most giants who just rely heavily on their size and their strength, you know, this particular giant comes, you know, he's come to terms with the fact that someone could beat him and that he would do anything to stay on top. And wait. Whoa! An inverted suplex onto a reverse suplex onto the floor by Paul White and well I'm not sure what 
Paul White was trying to do, but that was an incredible move by Paul White onto Animal. And now, wait a minute, what's Paul White doing? Oh my god! Rammed into the barricade. Unbelievable. Now Paul White gets back in the ring and... Well, I'm not sure what... Well, if he had stayed in the ring, he would have won by a countout. I mean, this has turned into a street fight, folks. Okay, so now both men are back inside the ring. And now, wait. An arm bar right to Paul White. Now, Paul White... Is he going to get out of this? Nope. He does not. So, it suffices me to say that the Road Warriors are the most dominant team ever. And now, wait, what are they doing here? Oh, come on! You already won! Are you serious? Really? Man, oh man, did they really wanted to rub it in. Well, I, I will say, even though the feud in terms of the series is over, I have to say that this whole thing between the corporation and the Road Warriors is far from over. But until then, uh, this is your host, Taju, signing off. Until then... Have a good night, everybody.